In this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my microphones and my interface and my whole setup so that I don't have to leave my drum throne and I could record drum tracks at home. Coming right up. In this video, I'm gonna show you all my mic setup and my placements and how I wrote it into the computer. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on. Overhead microphones are one of the most important set of mics in this whole setup. This is supposed to represent an accurate stereo image of the overall setup of your drums. It should be treated as so and not so much like a cymbal mic. These cymbals are loud enough and if done correctly, you shouldn't have to use an individual spot mic. Now, of course, this all depends on the sound you're trying to achieve, but the mic technique I went with is the space pair. The space pair is a very common miking technique for drums. A lot of people use it and why it's called the space pair is because this microphone and this microphone are the same height and they're the same distance exactly from the center of my snare drum. So the idea is that this captures a perfect image of the overall drum sound. The way I do that is I take a tape measure and I measure from the capsule over here to the center of the snare drum, which is 40 inches, and then I'll do the same over here. So that's basically how I determined exactly where I'm gonna place these things. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is that the actual height of these off the ground have to be the same on both sides. Otherwise, the sound is gonna travel to one microphone quicker than the other, and that'll kinda of give you some null frequencies, and it'll give you some phasing issues later on in mixing. Next up in my mic setup is a snare mic. I chose the Shure SM57 because it's affordable and it's one of the most versatile mics on the market. This mic is especially great on the snare drum because of its frequency response and you get a pretty good bang for your buck. Remember, this microphone isn't necessarily going to sound great on its own and keep in mind that all of my drum recordings you hear is a combination of this mic and others in my setup. Now it's pointing at the center of the drum because I want to capture it all and it's not directly miking the skin because I don't want all those extra resonances and I've got it just off of the rim here, finger width of two from the height of the rim. Now this is a dynamic mic with a directional pattern, meaning whatever it's pointing at, it's going to capture the high and the low frequencies. Moving on to the kick drum mic, this is an AKG D112 MK2. It is like a very well-known microphone, kind of like the SM57 in a sense of popularity. This is really good on kick drums. It's also really good on bass cabs and floor toms. This is the mic I use. I'll show you how I position it here. I put it inside the kick drum, so I get a lot of the attack from this position here. I don't necessarily point it right at the center of the kick drum as I don't want all the attack, but I do point it at the outside of the shell where it meets the drum skin, so I get all that resonance. It still kind of captures a bit of the attack, but I make up for that with the room mic and a sub kick that I make in the DAW. I could show you that in another video. Moving on to the toms, let's go see what those are all about. These are the CAD M179s, and they're a large diaphragm condenser mic. Now, these are great because they're relatively cheap and they have some great options on them. There's a little dial here, you can actually change the polar pattern. I've got it set to hypercardioid because that's the best sounding on the toms. There's also a high pass filter and a, a pad of minus 20 dBs. If you don't wanna blow your speakers out or your microphone out, you just throw that thing on, especially for loud sonic sources like a tom. I basically point it down at the shell. I don't want it necessarily right here at the edge. I kind of have it tilted up like this towards the center of the drum because I really want that stick attack. Especially for metal, that's kind of what I'm going for. Now these are great because it comes with a shock mount. They're kind of hard to position, but I found ultimately this was the best position on the drums for me. I got this on a mic stand here. All of the toms get them. I've got one here, one here, and then one over here on the floor tom. Now moving on from here, we're gonna go and check out my mono room mic. Okay, so this is my mono room mic. The point of this mic is to capture the ambience of the room and to kind of fill in all the, the spots that your close mics couldn't get. So this is the same microphone, the CAD M179, on the hypercardioid pattern. I've got this probably two feet off the ground. How I have it centered is about center between my overheads. Because it's mono, it's right down the center. I want to capture it as equally as possible, left and right. This will be an essential sound in your drum mix. I mean, you can record without a room mic, but you won't get that big, huge sound that you're looking for without it. Imagine it like this. You draw a big center line down between both your overhead mics, and that's where you want to position this guy. 
Now I found that the higher you go with it, the more symbols you get and the lower you go with it, the more low end you get. So I kind of put it, you know, about halfway in between. So I'm getting a lot of that boom from the kick drum and a lot of body from the snare in it. Of course, this is all good and important, but <laughs> how do we get it into our computer? So I'll show you my setup, my interface. It's pretty inexpensive. I think it was like almost $700 Canadian, which is pretty good for some really, really clean sounding preamps. Let's take a look at that. All right, so this is my Focusrite 18i20. And as you can see, I'm actually running vocals through it right now to do this as a voiceover because my camera audio is shit. It has eight inputs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's also got an instrument in, meaning you can use XLR, balance line, or a quarter inch. And you can just plug in like a DI. And it's got a pad only for these two channels, these two front ones. Another good thing to note is the phantom power. So those condenser mics require external power and that's what these buttons are for. Now, if you do decide to use external mics, then I would suggest getting one that has an option to put phantom power on your inputs. This is a great option because we need to hear things back as a drummer and we need to play along to a click, especially if we're doing session work like I do. So in this case, the 18i20 has two outputs for headphone jacks with individual controls. And I run a quarter inch cable. It comes out of there and it goes around all the way over to here in my mixer. And then it goes into this first input here. Now what's great about this is you can like take out the high end, you can control the level. And then that sends over to here to a headphone output. You could also just run it out of the thing and into a headphone jack, but I wanted more control over the level here instead of having to get up back and then go back and forth to try and control it. In this case, I just control it from the main level and then it goes to my headphones. So when we're doing click tracks or I'm drumming along to any songs, I don't have to get up and go to the computer to change it. Up till now, it's been about like $2,500 Canadian to acquire all that stuff. And that's not including the laptop or all the plugins that I use in the DAW. Now don't be shied away from this because there are some really inexpensive pieces of gear that you can acquire that cost far less than the ones I have and you can get great quality drum sounds from them. If you wanna learn more about drums and drumming related things then check out this playlist I'm gonna put up here. If you haven't already, please consider hitting the round subscribe icon and hitting the bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm Cameron and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.